Hi, Professor Fenton. So, my first question to you is, why should I get the COVID vaccine? Well, you know, the reality is, is that the pandemic that we've been living through has been such a challenging time for all of us. Um, millions of people affected around the world, and certainly in our own country, we know we've lost the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. The vaccines provide us with an effective tool to help to bring this pandemic to an end. And it will only be effective if as many of us in the population get vaccinated and we ensure that we protect ourselves and we protect those we love. So this is really about bringing the pandemic to an end. It's about protecting our health and it's about doing what's right for us and for others as well. I know a lot of young people are worried about if the vaccine's safe or not. Yes, indeed. And, you know, not only young people. Throughout the course of the availability of the vaccine from autumn of last year, these are questions that people have asked. And I really welcome those questions. People need to know about the safety. Is it effective? Um, is it good for me? Does it have any impact on, for example, my reproductive health? These are questions that we have been getting. But the vaccine is safe and it is effective. And we know this because of the many trials that have been undertaken with hundreds of thousands of people around the world before the vaccines have been approved for the delivery. We also know they're safe because as we're rolling out the vaccine and delivering it to people, if there are any side effects or any adverse effects, those adverse effects are reported to the Department of Health and we're able to get a sense of what problems might exist and adjust. And that's exactly what we did when we saw signals of clots with at the AstraZeneca vaccine, and then we changed policy so that we could make sure it's safe. So both in the development as well as the delivery of the vaccine, we're really keeping an eye on safety. It was developed really quickly. Do you think mm. we should be alarmed at that? Uh, not at all. You know, science moves really quickly and it's a testament to just the amazing research collaborations which have been established as a result of the pandemic, both here in the United Kingdom and across the world. Remember that the technologies that we're using for the vaccines weren't developed last year. These were technologies which were in development and which were used for other vaccines. But with the emergence of the pandemic, we were able to apply that technology to the coronavirus to get the coronavirus vaccine. And over the past year, the development was doing the large clinical trials which were necessary to both ensure that the vaccine was safe, that we were clear about what side effects, if any, it had, and we were able to work with hundreds of thousands of volunteers from many parts of the world to ensure the vaccine works in different genders, in different races, in different contexts. So all that research was done to ensure that we were able to be confident in the vaccine. It's definitely reassuring you've got such a large group of people that you've tested on mm -hmm. to see if it works. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular risks for young people getting the vaccine from a BAME background? Uh, you know, that's a really good question. I think um, we know that the safety profile for the vaccine is excellent. It is absolutely excellent. And especially with the vaccines which are given to young people, which are the Pfizer vaccine, and only recently we heard the Moderna vaccine being approved for young people as well. We know that they have excellent safety profiles. So apart from the sort of pain at the site of injection, uh, for some people and for some young people, they may feel a little bit unwell, fever, chills, a little bit of achiness after the vaccine. All of those symptoms usually go after the first 24 to 48 hours. But even then, they're only seen in a, a low proportion of people who receive the vaccine. And we continue to monitor all side effects for the vaccine when they're given to young people and people of all ages. So the vaccine is safe, it's well tolerated. And um, you know, for the young people I've spoken to, the problem is never getting the vaccine itself. Although some people may be a little needle phobic, but it's about getting to the vaccine center. It's about getting, you know, taking time off work or from school or study. It's our busy lives and people not being able to prioritize it. But once you're there and you have the vaccine, I think everybody has a, a fairly good experience about it. So Harris, tell me about your experience. Have you had the vaccine already? Yes, so I had my first dose of the vaccine about five weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I'm now due my second dose. And it was, it was a really, great vaccine, I have to say. I went into 
a walk-in vaccination centre mm -hmm. and it took about half an hour of my day. The longest part was waiting around afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually scared of needles. So, and I absolutely hated it. I, I was like, I want my mum to be there with me. Uh -huh. But it was great because the nurse just came up to me and she told me to look away. And within a second, I had the vaccine and yeah. there was nothing to worry about. Yeah. I think the bit that I was worried about was the side effects. And I did have a few side effects with the first vaccine. Mm -hmm. I had a really achy arm and I did get flu-like symptoms mm -hmm. for a day or two. But after that, I felt fine and now mm -hmm. all my friends are like have you had the vaccine and yeah. it's, it's now a little competition who can get the second dose yeah. first yeah. and who can get the first dose and it's just i think having that community of young people interested oh. in getting the vaccine it's really reassuring really to have others like me that want to get it and mm -hmm. even if we've got friends that are like oh i don't want the vaccine or the post up on the social media mm -hmm. we try and persuade them i think that is like the power of young people is in our little community. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to get the vaccine? What was the motivation for you? Having experienced the last eight, 20 months of the pandemic, what was it for you that said, you know what, I'm gonna do this? So I'm on a gap year at the moment due to COVID. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I want my university experience to be normal when I go this September. Yeah. Because all uni students know online teachings, no fun sitting in your bedroom, and the vaccine's our chance to go back to some sort of normality yeah. and we've they've said we can meet in person the freshers fairs are in person i'm like i'm going to see actual people so what made me want to get the vaccine was that chance to get normality like my gap year's been entirely on the computer and I'm, I'm here today in london interviewing you and it's such a difference compared to where we were 18 months ago to where we are now we're finally getting back to some normality and it's really motivating to me that we're finally getting towards some sort of end. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And that, that incentive to vaccinate, to get back to normality, is something that I often reflect on. What are some of the th things that you're looking forward to doing that you haven't been able to do over the past year? Uh, so I do jujitsu, and yeah. it's been socially distanced sport for so long, and sports haven't been able to go ahead. And to mm -hmm. actually go near someone and throw them on the floor, as bad as that sounds, it makes such a difference. I also do singing as well, and doing choir on Zoom is yeah. not the same thing not as the same singing thing. in a big theatre full of people. Mm -hmm. So just getting back to the things we used to do, even if it has to be some socially distanced, at least we're seeing people now. Mm -hmm. And it's great that I can just have some sort of a normal end to my gap year and mm -hmm my time without being at university. Yeah. I know we discussed the short-term side effects, but mm -hmm. are there any long-term side effects of vaccine, particularly for BAME people? As I said, the technologies which are used are not new technologies. They've been used before. We're applying it to the coronavirus. And there's nothing in the technology that would make black, Asian, and minority ethnic people have a worse safety profile than others and we're certainly not seeing it in the data at all so far so as far as race and ethnicity is concerned and the safety of the vaccine we're not seeing any signal which suggests that some communities are worse off when it comes to side effects than others i know one big thing for young people is we don't seem as much of a risk for covid yeah. as the older population so is there a point of us getting the vaccine? So there are two reasons why it's important. First, it's important for young person's own health and well-being, because uh, not only do you have the risk of becoming infected and becoming unwell, but we know that between 13 to 15 to 20 percent of people who get COVID may have long COVID. So the first reason why young people should consider getting the vaccine is to protect themselves and to reduce the risk of long COVID. The second reason, and this is a really important one, is that so many young people have contact with older adults. And if you're socializing, going club, doing all the things that young people do, right? You're going clubbing, you're meeting friends in bars, you're eating out all the time, that increases your risk of being exposed to the virus. And then think of it, you go home to visit mom and dad, you go to say nan, that's how the infection gets to people who are vulnerable. And that's what we are trying to prevent. So the second reason for getting the vaccine 
is to be part of helping to bring the pandemic to an end and playing your part in, get, in being protected. Has the vaccine been tested on children and is it safe for us to have or is it mainly adults in these clinical trials that you were talking about? So initially when the uh, vaccine and all vaccines are being developed, they're developed initially in healthy adults who are able to give informed consent to be able to participate in the vaccine trials. And I was really pleased that one of the reasons why we were able to move so quickly last year in developing the vaccines is that we had hundreds of thousands of people across the world who volunteered to be part of the vaccine trials. And that means that those trials were able to go really quickly because we had really large sample sizes. Now, once the vaccines have been approved for adults, then there are other clinical trials which are done for younger people and then for children to ensure safety and effectiveness. And those trials have been undertaken towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year. So the data are now available, and that is why the government has been able to give policies for vaccination of younger people, uh, initially 16 to 17 year olds. And of course, remember those who are over 12, but may have some compromised immune systems or may be in contact with vulnerable adults. So those young people over 12 can also get vaccinated as well. So this is really exciting that not only is it effective and safe for adults, but we now have the data about how it's effective for young people as well. That's really reassuring. So many young people can now get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And similar to like when we get chicken pox and we develop natural immunity, why don't we do that with COVID? Yes, you know, it's a question I often get asked because people are like, well, I'm sure I had COVID before because I, had, I couldn't smell last spring and, you know, felt unwell. I don't think I need the vaccine. And the truth is you do need the vaccine. The vaccine gives you a much more powerful and enduring immune response than if you were infected naturally. And that is why we're encouraging everybody, even if you think you've had it, to get the vaccine because that way we are assured that you have the level of immunity that you need. And talking about this immunity, how long will it take for me to develop it? So as you know, the vaccine courses for the two dose vaccines are over eight weeks. Uh, so you have to have dose one and dose two. And then in general, by the time you have the second dose, two weeks after that, you're getting up at the higher levels of vaccine protection. And we know that that immunity will last for many months. Because the vaccine is new, a lot of studies are continuing to see how long that protection lasts and when it begins to wane. But for young people, especially because the immune systems are so great in young people, you tend to have higher levels of immunization and protection. And that's another reason why getting vaccinated uh, in your youth is much be even better because you have a really good immune system that will respond well to the vaccine. So if I've got the vaccine, am I totally immune and I don't have to wear a mask anymore? Or do I still have to take precautions? Well, you know, um, no vaccine is 100% effective. And therefore, we cannot say that you will never get infected. But what the vaccine does is that if you are infected, it significantly reduces the risk of you getting severe disease and of you dying from the disease. So there is a probability that if you are vaccinated, you could go out to, you know, I went out recently to my first uh, sort of night club event. Uh, and initially it was quite scary, but because I'm double vaccinated and I have been for a while, and I was with people who are also vaccinated, I had the confidence to be able to be in that environment. But if I did get infected, I also know that my vaccination would mean that I'd have a milder disease and my risk of dying would be significantly lower. And that's the confidence that the vaccine gives you, whether you're young or whether you're old. It's about reducing risk, protecting yourself and protecting others. And there's quite a lot of BAME young people and BAME people that are nervous about getting the COVID vaccine. What would you say to them? So we've been doing a lot of work in London with our black, Asian and minority ethnic communities about the vaccine. Um, you know, there are three reasons over the past year that we've really discovered that are important to our minority uh, uh, communities. The first is just trust. People are wary about how fast the vaccine has been developed. Um, people often want to wait a little bit to see what happens to other people before uh, we take the vaccine. Uh, so that's one of the, the main reasons, people trust and uncertainty about the vaccine. 
The second uh, reason uh, among our minority communities is access. That, you know, oftentimes uh, people, especially from some communities, prefer to get their vaccines in much more intimate spaces, their GP practices, through their community pharmacy, in an outreach setting, rather than some of the big, glitzy stadium events and so forth. So there's that element of access as well. And then the third reason that we find with uh, our communities not taking up the vaccine is real concerns about the long-term side effects um, and wanting more data, more evidence. And as I said earlier in the conversation, we're doing the research, we're monitoring the situation carefully, and if any changes need to be made, we will. But ultimately, the thing that really matters to people is that we have one-on-one -on -one conversations with them, that we really listen to their concerns, meet people where they're at, meet communities where they're at, and listen, and then provide answers that are meaningful to them, and give people time. When we started this journey in London, this, this story I hope you, you like, when we started this journey in London and we looked at the vaccine hesitancy, for, for example, of black Caribbean communities, it was 50% of black Caribbeans in London said, we would never have a vaccine, not interested, etc. But we've worked really hard at it. We've engaged communities, engaged young people. Vaccine hesitancy is now very low, much lower now. It's in the 10 to 15% range of people saying they would not have the vaccine. And we've seen uptake increase tremendously in these communities over that period. So we know that work works and that people will respond to that. And we're seeing the same pattern as well in young people. The more we engage, the more we answer their questions, is the more confident people feel. You know, one of the things I have missed throughout the pandemic, because my parents live in the Caribbean, they're in Jamaica, so I haven't been able to travel and see them now for nearly two years, but they're both vaccinated, and I'm vaccinated, the family's vaccinated now. So we're so excited to see each other again and to be able to, as you say, hug and connect. Um, and I think thinking about the things that matter to us and placing vaccination within that context is perhaps so one of the things that we can think about. One of the things we hear from our young people in London is, when you come to us and only are pushing the vaccine and not asking us how we are, not thinking about our own realities and our own lives, it feels as if we're just an obstacle in the path and we want you to engage us as people. Does that resonate with you? Yes, I think sometimes I think young people feel like they're just numbers on a sheet and yeah. we just have to get down the list and yeah. get the statistics up that young people are getting vaccinated mm. and I think that feels very isolating like oh they don't actually care about me they just want the numbers better but when you engage as you say with the young people it's yeah. and especially like one-to-one -one like this it's so reassuring that you think about us as people rather than just numbers and you want to get us vaccinated mm -hmm just so we can go back to normal life, like you want to go travelling to your parent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It differs from person to person. I think it's really important that if someone's apprehensive about the vaccine, think about how the pandemic's affected them and how the vaccine could benefit them and make mm -hmm. us go back to normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. So my final question to you is, if you were in my shoes and you were going to say to the young people of London, for example, three reasons why you should get the vaccine. What would, what would you say? What, what, would, what would your message to young Londoners be? Ooh, I think my first reason would be, let's get back to normal. Okay, great. And that's probably the biggest reason, because mm -hmm. it's been 18 months of such a dark time, and now we've got this chance to try and get to normal. Mm -hmm. The second reason would be, protect yourself. I know there was, and during the first couple of ways it was protect others, but mm -hmm. young people forget that they can be affected by COVID and particularly by long COVID. Yeah. So protect yourself because you don't know if you get COVID how it'll affect you in the long term. Mm -hmm. And my third reason would be, as you said throughout this interview, there's been so much testing <laughs> and trials. The vaccine's really safe and there's no reason you shouldn't get it, even if you feel oh, it's not going to make a difference to me. It's a one-second jab at the end of the day. You can walk mm -hmm. in and walk out within 30 minutes mm -hmm. and maybe get a lollipop at the end. You never know. <laughs> but, but just let's get back to normal, I think, is the main message. Yeah.
great. Well, listen, thank you so much for that. You know, and I love those three messages about getting back to normal, protecting yourself. These are really important things for all of us. And I'm always mindful that, yes, we'll have more data, and yes, the research is ongoing. Our commitment as physicians and as people who are taking care of patients is that we will ensure that the vaccine is effective and it is safe and it's delivered in a way that everybody can get it because we want everybody to be protected. And our commitment is to provide facts and information for everybody to make an informed choice because at the end of the day, COVID is going to be around for a long time. This virus isn't going to be going away. And so we're gonna to have to live with COVID. Vaccination is gonna be part of it. And as you say, some of the new behaviors that we've picked up over the last year may well be part of it as well. So let's use this opportunity and recognize that, you know, many countries around the world are still waiting for the vaccine. And there are many people at risk who haven't had their vaccination yet. So let's all take part in this.